Good afternoon, radio audience, and as always, we want to thank you uh, for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, a broadcast that is a live Bible question and answer program. Uh, where you, the radio audience, at any point in time during this broadcast, uh, feel free. Pick up your phones, dial 281-837-2222 uh, if you have any questions, comments you'd like to make. And we'd like to listen to all your Bible questions and also listen to your comments as well. Ephesians chapter 6. I want to commence the reading this afternoon at verse number 10 through 12 as we'll deal with the subject of Satan's work in government in the Bible. Satan's work in governments in the Bible. And uh, we'll use Ephesians 6 as a launching pad as the Apostle Paul writes to Christians and he lets us know that we are in, in fact in a spiritual uh, warfare. In Ephesians chapter 6 beginning at verse number 10 of our Bible, Paul says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I wanted to read those a uh, few verses there from Paul's uh, letter to the saints in Ephesus, because I want you to pay attention to the word uh, that he uses there in verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Now, Javier has done, if you go back and look at previous videos, he's done a, a phenomenal job on breaking Amen. down that word uh, principalities a couple of weeks ago, but uh, just for, uh, for your notes and for your reference, that word there is a state that's ruled by a prince. When you talk about principality, it's a state uh, that is ruled by a prince. Now, we need to understand something that there are numerous scriptures that the Bible shows and tells us that Satan is a prince and described as a prince of this world. As a matter of fact, these same Christians that uh, Paul is writing to, uh, he lets them know, he reminds them of their behavior and their their conversation before they had obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 2. Listen what he said about them, uh, reminding them of their, uh, their lifestyle prior to their obedience to the gospel, beginning in verse 1. And he says, And you have he, talk about God, quicken, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein time passed, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh, get this, in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, he says, even as others. And so I want you to be mindful that he describes here uh, Satan. You know how before they obeyed the gospel, before we obeyed the gospel, our behavior uh, was that of fleshly. It was earthly. It was sensual. It was a behavior uh, that was led by the prince of the air, who is none other than Satan uh, himself. As a matter of fact, when Jesus uh, got on earth, was on earth in the flesh, in John chapter 12, in John chapter 12 and, and verse number, I'll just start with verse 28. And uh, I, I, the Bible says here, Jesus speaking, Father, he says, glorify your name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Jesus answered said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sake. Now notice what he says in verse 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world, so talking about Satan, be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Now, and so it should be understood based upon the foundation that we have laid that uh, there is a principality at work, uh, even in the world uh, today. Satan has his, his ministers uh, who uh, portray themselves, as Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians, as angels of light. 
Uh, these are also men uh, and women who could be led by the spirit, the prince, Beelzebub, who are trying to hinder people uh, from obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, Paul talks about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to read this, then we'll make a few points. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, he talks about if the gospel is being, is being hid, who's causing the gospel uh, to be heard? And who is pedophile? Who is hindering the gospel? Who's behind uh, the people and, and of like who are not uh, worshiping right? Who, who are not uh, preaching the, the doctrine of Jesus Christ uh, based on the two posts, the pattern that God has outlined in the Word of God. Who's behind all this? Well, Paul says in verse number 3, but if I, of 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3, but if our gospel will be hid, is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Paul says, for we preach not ourselves, that's going to be key, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. I want you to understand something. Myself, Brother Ozan, Brother Javier, Frias, as, as long as I've known these brethren, uh, we have have always propagated on this program, even in the teachings that some of you have viewed online, we let you know that we dare not ever try to steal any glory from God. Amen. God shares his glory with no man, and we know that. We understand that. Everything that we do as it relates to spirituality, let me tell you something, we're not doing, saying, uh, having this unadulterated truth program on the air for almost 20 years, so that we can get rewards from men. We are not looking for, for rewards from mankind in anything that we do. Amen. Our reward, we understand, is in heaven. And so when we, over the last couple of weeks and months, have been propagating uh, to you all through preaching and teaching that those who close the doors of worship are cowards, are weak need. It is because that's exactly what they are, because they don't understand that worship is designed to bring glory and honor to God. Amen. It is an opportunity where the world should see, in spite of what the government or anybody else says, that what we are going to do is we're going to sacrifice our lives, our Amen. bodies, for our love for the brethren so that God could get the worship that he so much deserves. God has never, and hold on the line, caller, God has never uh, allowed government, I'm going to make sure you get this, he has never allowed government to close the door on his prescribed worship. Amen. And I'm going to qualify that. And that's regardless of what land God's people found themselves in. When you go back to the Old Testament in the book of Exodus, Pharaoh is the he is acting as a agent for Satan to God's people in the book of Exodus. God is going to send Moses to Pharaoh to a foreign land where his people are in bondage for the purpose of telling Pharaoh to let my people go a three days journey to worship me. Amen. Now I want you to look at this in Exodus 3.18 because God has always demanded worship from his people. In Exodus 3 and 18, after Moses make up all the uh, a couple excuses why he's not the man for the job, God says in verse number 17 of Exodus 3, and I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall hearken to your voice, and you shall come, you and the elder of Israel, unto the king of Egypt, and you shall say unto him, The Lord, the God of Hebrews, have met with us. Now look what he says, latter part of verse 18. And now let us go, we beseech you, 
three days journey into the wilderness. Why? That we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. That is the message that Pharaoh, Moses was to bring to Pharaoh. God wants his worship from his people. Now what God tells Moses, I'm sure, verse 19, that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand. So there's something that God knows Pharaoh's not going to do. God knows eventually he's going to have to lay down the hammock on Pharaoh before eventually that he lets him go. But I want you to see something. God sends Moses to his people for the purpose of letting Pharaoh know that, hey, I need my worship. Now, notice what happens when you turn to Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. Moses, eventually he'll go, uh, he and Aaron, to Moses. And now I want you to notice in Exodus 5, verse 1. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in, and they told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, let them go, why? That they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Now look what Pharaoh said. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? that I should obey his voice to let Israel go. Now, he's going to find out who the Lord is. And many of you brethren today, with this online worship, with this foolishness you're pulling off, you're going to find out, like Pharaoh, if you don't repent, Amen. you're going to find out who the Lord is. He says, I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, the God of Hebrews had met with us. Let us go, we pray you. Three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. You know how you know they understood how important worship was? Do you see that? Even under the Old Testament, Moses understood how serious God was about the mechanics of his worship pattern. Now let me tell you how Satan operates. And you brethren who shut the doors, you operate just like Moses does. I mean, just like, excuse me, like Pharaoh did. Yeah, yeah. You try Amen. to make the worship convenient. You think you can prescribe, that you can uh, ordain uh, the, the, the worship pattern that God has designed. And that is a tactic of the prince of the air, Satan himself. Because notice here with me, if you just be so kind before I toss it, one of the things that Pharaoh, he does. Go to Exodus chapter 8. Hold on the line call if you hadn't hung up or you called back. I want to make sure we get this. Exodus Amen. chapter 8, because this is the government that the children of Israel have found themselves under here uh, in the old, in the, under the old covenant. In Exodus chapter 8 and verse number 25, and Pharaoh, and this is after God put a plague of a swarm of flies on them. And Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, now listen what he did. Go you sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses says, it is not me so to do. Now, notice what he wanted them to do. He said, I want you to go sacrifice, but he wanted them to sacrifice in Egypt. Yes, sir. He wanted them to sacrifice where they were, in this land. For we shall, now notice what Moses understood, though. He says, and Moses said, it is not me so to do. For we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? And will they not stone us? <laughs> Moses said, we will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God. How? As he shall command us. Mm. Now, I want you to notice that. There is a place they know they can worship. There is a specific gathering that they know that needs to take place, and it needs to be done, not the way Pharaoh says, yes. but the way God commanded. Now look what Pharaoh does, but the devil's not through, because look what he does in verse 28. Pharaoh says, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Now look what he says, only you shall not go, here's your brother, go very far away, <laughs> and treat for me. And so now, he says, okay, you can worship, but you don't have to go far away. I want you to stay close by. Mm -hmm. See, that's how the prince of the air works. He makes it like Jeroboam. He makes it a convenient worship. It's too far to go to Jerusalem. Mm. The circumstances, the COVID-19, uh, will not allow you to go and to worship like God wants you to worship. So I want you to worship, but don't go, don't go very very far. Mm -hmm. You can stay in your home uh -oh. and worship God on the internet. 
And we'll look at this as coming together. You know, I had a question for you, brother, while I'm in this neighborhood. I'm just curious. Is it coming together because you brothers believe you can see each other online? Is that what makes it coming together? Let me ask you something. If it was just a phone call, if we just all got on the phone, and it was conference call, 281-837-2222, is it coming together, would it still be considered coming together if we all just got on the phone together and just on a conference call? Or do y'all believe it's coming together because we can see each mm -hmm. other? See, I got I, some, I, we have a great brother who worshiped with us. His name is Brother John. Hope he doesn't mind me using his name. Faithful brother in the Lord. And he, he has a, a, a seeing condition. He's blind. Uh, and that's what he is. He's blind. He can't see. And but you know what he does? This brother's a faithful brother, and uh, I'm just wondering. He can't get online and see you all online, <laughs> but this brother is faithful to the Lord, and he comes to worship. He gathers with us. So I'm just wondering if he just got online with you brothers who are doing this online worship because of your fear. Would you say that because he can't see, he's not together with us? Or just because he got online itself, he has now come together with us to worship. And the second question I want to ask you now is, how in the world are you going to preach on Hebrews 10, 25, and 26 now after the COVID crisis is over? See, because if, if you're calling it coming together based on your online YouTube videos, then if you shut it down after the COVID, then you are the, you are the problem in causing people from not worshiping if they don't come to the building. See, if, if you shut it down, then you're the one who are preventing people from coming together to worship and assemble on the Lord's Day if you believe that they're coming together right now. I, I just, I'm just curious how you brothers are going to handle this. Because you brothers are operating under the influence and the power of the prince of this air, Amen. which is none other than Satan himself. You have, you have concocted a worldly mechanic of worship. And I'm going to tell you, brother, you get mad all you want. God does not approve of this foolishness that you brothers are pulling off. Amen. Now, I want to give you one more before uh, we take this phone call. In Exodus 10:21. God puts a plague of darkness on uh, the Egyptians in Exodus 10, 21. I want you to listen here what happened. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven, and that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Get this, for three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. I want to say this. God takes care of his children. Amen. He, God makes sure that the light shines on his children. I want to make sure you get that. God knows how to protect, if it's his will, those who are his, when they're doing the right thing from a coronavirus, from, a, from the flu bug, and from whatever other disease, brethren, you might catch when you gather together on the first day of the week. You're operating in the fear of the government is what you're doing, brother. Amen. And you lie when you say it's anything different. You can't say, oh, we just love each other so much that we are concerned about each other and we don't <laughs> want each other to catch the coronavirus. So the wise thing to do is not to gather. Let me tell you something. You are going against what God said because God said if you love your brethren, you will lay down your life for your brethren. Amen. Amen. Loving your brethren is not going against what God has commanded you to do, and that is to gather together on the first day of the week. Now, we'll keep reading Exodus 10 and 24. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, now look what Moses says, I mean what Pharaoh says, in verse 24 of Exodus 10, Go ye serve the Lord, now look what he says, Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. He says, and Moses said, you must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not a hoof be left behind. For thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we know not with what we must serve the Lord until, now notice it, until we come there. 
So he says, until we gather together, we don't know what we're going to offer to the Lord. We're going to we're going to offer whatever he prescribes at that time, and we're not leaving anything behind. Amen. Brethren, Satan will allow you this convenient worship. He'll allow you to worship and not go too far. He'll allow you to be as religious as you want to be as long as you're not doing all that God has commanded you. Brothers, repent. And we're going to stay on this until you get it right because your soul and those who are listening to you, souls, are at stake. 281-837-2222. We'll take the callers, question, or comment this time. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. All right, thank you. Um, yes, I just wanted to call and make a comment about um, the saints uh, choosing not to gather. Um, I, Lord willing, July 28th, I'll have to celebrate a year, um, so I'm still a baby. And I, one of the most disheartening things that has been for me is to watch the saints of God around me struggle with this spirit of fear and anxiety mm. and worry about coming out especially when it's concerning, you know, what God's hand is doing at this time. Amen. And um, I just wanted to ask for just um, uplifted prayers for, you know, there are three babes in my congregation, and we have kept the doors open, praise God. Amen. Um, Wonderful. But um, there is you. a catering to those who are fearful um, because the online worship is, is streamed. Yeah. Um, and there is a faithful congregation that's about 40 miles away from me that they do open their doors for their morning, evening, and the Wednesday Bible service. Praise so God. I will go out for the evening service as our congregation is not doing evening and our Bible studies are, are through Zoom. But I, I just wanted to say that for us new in the body, um, sometimes I feel a little sense of abandonment um, from, you know, my brothers and sisters. And so I have to just continue to pray and ask God, yes. who is my father and my comforter, yes. um, to help me to continue to keep my focus on him, yes. not what people are and are not doing, yes. and also um, to continue to love and to reach out um, and to not harbor any resentment or anything like that towards the saints. Um, and to still be able to pull wisdom from them when they do speak um, for the ones that are choosing not to come out. And I just want to thank you, brothers, for what you're doing, um, for your steadfastness, for your open rebuking. And I, I really love you, brothers, and I thank you for being there. Thank you, our sister. We God appreciate you, you so man. much. Yes. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you, Brother Henry. You know, this subject is needful uh, to be spoken upon concerning Satan's work. Uh, in government and what he's doing. See, he knows that his time is short. His time is running out before Christ returns in midair and burns his earth and takes his children from paradise out, takes those who are on earth in his kingdom and lifts them up to to lift them up and be changed forever with him. So his time is short and he's ticking away. So we want to look at the scriptures in the Bible and look how Satan used government uh, to flex his muscle, if you will. In Exodus 7, uh, looking at verse number 11, we look at uh, where, Mo, actually verse 10, Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Look what it says. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rod. So what did the magicians of Pharaoh do now? Pharaoh is like a president of Egypt and he's using his leaders, his magicians, to execute his, his power or his muscle. Now these magicians are using Satan's power to turn a rod into a serpent. So this scripture is actually something in the past that happened. It really existed. It's not a made-up fairy tale like Cinderella or these other cartoons on Disneyland. And another scripture is verse 22 concerning the blood where uh, the fish, verse 21, it says, The fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. The magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And so they did that with the blood, and it turned into the water into blood. Now, in verse number, uh, number 6 of Exodus 8, Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Look at it, it says in verse 7, And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. So understand that these magicians that come on TV, David Blaine and all these other names, Chris, uh, whatever his name is, they are doing the Chris Angel, thank you brother, 
they are doing these things through the power of Satan. And understand that Pharaoh is using uh, these magicians and Satan at the same time. Look at another verse uh, concerning verse 18 and 19. It says, concerning lice. The magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but it says they could not. That's where Satan's power does not have ultimate rule against the church, where they desired and tried to pull out lice, but they could not. In verse number uh, uh, 11 of uh, chapter 9, the magicians could not stand before Moses because the boils, the boil was upon the magicians, upon all uh, the, the Egyptians. And so when you look at these scriptures, it shows you the limitation of Satan's power. And God is all-powerful. And so when it comes to the example that is written in uh, the book of Numbers, how Moses, the priest, and the multitude of thousands and thousands of faithful Hebrews were in the midst of not one, not two, not three, but five different plagues. And we're in the midst of just one plague. And they were not afraid to be around and continue the work of the priest and continue the work of the tabernacle around five different plagues. And we today are running and hiding. This is, a lot of people have said that we've never experienced this before. I've heard that before by several ministers. We've never experienced a thing like this before. Actually, we have in the Bible. If you just read your, your, your book and numbers, they've experienced it multiple times in the church. I'm not talking about in Egypt. I'm talking about in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And they continue to do the work of God. They didn't go and hide. Now, before we leave in Daniel chapter 10, looking at verse 13, an angel was sent to Daniel. He says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Below Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So 21 days this angel is fighting against Satan, against also the prince of Persia. And so understand that take heed to not always listen to a ruler if it goes contradictory to the word of God. In Matthew 28, verse, verse number uh, 11, it says, Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave large money, large money, unto the soldiers, saying, Say, ye his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept and if this come to the governor's ears we will persuade him and secure you so they took the money and did as they were taught and this saying look what it's saying this news this fake news is commonly reported among the jews until this day so you got the priests chief priests the elders you got the soldiers and you got the governor pre uh, speaking this information to the jews the jews are spreading this false information that his body was taken and so this is false information Take note and recognize, audience, that what's happening today. Hospitals are being paid money, extra money, if they say that the individual died, died of COVID-19. There's lies being spread around. You got the deep state. You got all these individuals and Satan working behind the scenes. You got another angle that's going to be hit is through 5G, which is another thing that harms the body. So Satan is, is using different tactics using government to attack the saints, stay strong, and stay faithful till death. At this time, we'll be closing Romans 16, 16. The churches of Christ salute you. What are they going to do when they come back? Let's see. What are they going to do? He returns it off. He stops worshiping. You're the one, yeah. You're preventing them from worshiping. And the blind man, Brother Johnson. Oh, your Brother Johnson. What were you? Amen. Well, he can't see. So why don't we just listen on the phone? Why do I need yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Coming together. So why? Yeah. So what are you? What are you doing this for? Then? Why can't we just let you record it and we listen to it later? Why do you have to have? See, it's because it is about that. I want to see him. I want to see him move. Because we're together, we see him. Yeah, That's what, what they you, think. What you, when you see what you see online with these guys that's doing that streamlining, they're they're singing is other singings that they've done before that they've recorded. I don't is know if ever, it? Yeah. I and so, know. yeah, so they, they, the ones I've seen, they're not all singing together. They play a, a old video mm -hmm. that they recorded prior to COVID-19, and they play this guy up there singing with the rest of the congregation when they, when they were gathering. So I'm singing with me. 
<laughs> Come watch yeah. me. I'm saying. Yeah, if I'm the one, yeah, if I'm the one leading that day, I'm leading me in the song. Mm. It's crazy, brother. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Hey, brother. Look, look. You know, and you know the problem. You know the problem is George Williams put out the information about anti uh, against That's two cool. thoughts opposing each other, faith and caution. caution. But he has to understand, see, see, this was wrong with brothers like that, teaching sermons like that. The problem with George is, George didn't explain Daniel right. See, that was a lousy job on Daniel and Darius. When you hear, you'll see George, you did a lousy job. May God forgive you. Because Daniel was not told to pray to Darius. No. It was request. Not just to a God. But man. But any man. Right, man. So all Daniel had to do was come ask Darius. This is the technical statement. Can I pray to God about some things? That's what Daniel was saying. You don't tell me how to address God. See, George taught that wrong. He said that there's another God. No, no, no. It wouldn't have been saying there's another God no. to go ask Darius. What it was is, well, we're asking the government now. Can we worship? We don't ask the government nothing, man. man. We don't ask you nothing. He may be, George may be scared yeah. to die, but some of us are not. Amen, and, and that's why George Williams is a hiring. That's right. Because he saw the wolf and George ran. Now I love afraid. you. I pointed of people to the congregation afraid. before because I think you try to be sound, but brother, you got afraid. Yeah. yeah. Death is real, and you're going to die unless the Lord Amen. comes back. But you're scared to die, and you're scared to catch COVID from your members. You're not protecting anyone because just by them staying home, George, you you're an intelligent school man. You're ignorant if you think you can't catch COVID right. by not going to worship. You can ask other brothers who members have called in that didn't go to worship and they still caught it. Right. That was a waste yeah. of time. You're going to pay for that at the judgment, Amen. brother. You better repent. Amen. You can use all the big words you want. I got no problem with big words. Just make sure the big words don't cost That's you your salvation. Right. Amen. To That's he studied too words. much on how to yeah. versus what to say. He yeah. sounds good. Yeah. His words are smooth as all, but they'll drown you. But well, necessary. He could, Jesus said, go in your closet. Yeah. He did. See, you yeah, see, yeah. brother, you see yeah. what's wrong with that? Yeah. That's why George first of all, blew Jesus, it. Yeah, Jesus, he should have never went there. He never man. said that yet. First of all, he should have never went to Darius. He never said to pray to Darius. He didn't say worship. He said ask. Look, a petition means request. Right. That don't mean to pray. Uh, they're telling us we were supposed to get permission to open up the church. I don't need your no permission to do that. See, these kind of guys like this, bro, these brothers are scared. These are hirelings. They're not sons. Right. When they get to the judgment, Lord, that's what's going to make them say, I don't know you. Right. What man don't know his son? It's like, I don't know you. You're a hireling. I hired you. Right. Yeah, I hired you. You right. got your pay. Right. It's time to go to hell. Not because you're I not hired a son. you. You're, you're not a son. Serve. Serve. Oh, that's it. Because the servant serve. is on the house temporary, right? Amen. The son stay there. That's, that's what that's he what is, bro. He's a servant. Serve. He's a servant. He's serving me right now. Yeah, he might be baptizing for yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you going to the store for yeah. me. But at 6 o'clock, y'all off. <laughs> well, my son, is he going to leave? No, he lives here. Yeah. It's his house. We're done, right? It's his house. Yeah, See, that's what I'm saying, All brother. Right. Yeah. That's where the problem is at right God now. bless you, brother. Them brothers, my goodness, what do they teach him in school? Man, he should have stuck, stuck with the church. He should have kept just going to church and learn. I've been in church for years, man. God help us.